Hi everyone, welcome to Cultural Resource Management Anthropology 451 Week 5. This is September 27th through October 1st. You have Quiz 4 due this upcoming Sunday. And this Week 5 deals with the Archaeological Resource Protection Act of 1979. So last week in Week 4, we went through the Historic Sites Act and its importance mainly related to the establishment of the National Park Service and their role in cultural resource management in the United States. We also talked about the Antiquities Act of 1906 as setting a precedent for the government protection of archaeological sites on federal land. Um, that ultimately has now led to the Archaeological Resource Protection Act of 1979, which updated some of the regulations and penalties established in that earlier law, the Antiquities Act. So the Archaeological Resource Protection Act, otherwise known as ARPA, replaced the outdated Antiquities Act when it was passed by Congress in 1979. And I guess maybe replaced is, is the inaccurate word because the Antiquities Act is still on the book. Remember that the Antiquities Act today is used by presidents to establish national monuments. So the Antiquities Act never went away. It was just updated, maybe updated and not replaced as a better word to describe um, how the ARPA law was passed in 1979. It basically has two parts. The ARPA law said that it's illegal to collect artifacts on federal or tribal lands and that it requires a permit for excavations. So the Archaeological Resource Protection Act or ARPA forbids the collection, sale, purchase, exchange, or receipt of artifacts as well. It also forbids the interstate transport of illegally obtained cultural materials. So federal agencies can file either criminal or civil cases when they find people violating ARPA. The penalties for violation include stiff penalties, fines, the loss of equipment used in the ARPA violation, and in some extreme instances, jail time. So why does this affect us in cultural resource management? Well, all federal agency and tribal cultural resource personnel use the Archaeological Resource Protection Act. So, for example, if you end up being an archaeologist or an ethnographer working for a tribal historic preservation office, chances are that you're going to have to work with the Archaeological Resource Protection Act. It's also true that if you're working for a federal agency such as the National Park Service or the Bureau of Land Management Forest Service, you might have an ARPA violation in which you are responsible. All right, so how does the ARPA process work? First, a looted or vandalized archaeological site is discovered on federal or tribal land. It's a jurisdictional law enforcement is called in to visit on site with the archaeologist. So you, as the cultural resource professional, for example, working for the Forest Service, would go out and visit the disturbed, destroyed archaeological site with the jurisdictional law enforcement officer. So if you were working, for example, in Yellowstone National Park, the National Park Service, Ranger would be the jurisdictional law enforcement officer. Then you would conduct an archaeological crime scene investigation. You'd map all the disturbance, you'd record all the areas where looting had occurred, and you'd otherwise document it in order to support the ARPA investigation. Then the jurisdictional law enforcement officer, in, in, supported by the archaeologist, will present the case and the Archaeological Resource Protection Act violation to the U.S. District Attorney Office. And the U.S. District Attorney can decide not to prosecute the case. And if it chooses to do so, it can file either criminal or civil penalties. So how do you prove the criminal case? You must prove it's an archaeological resource greater than 100 years old, that it's on public or tribal land, that it's a prohibited act, that the artifacts taken from that archeological site on federal or tribal land were illegally obtained, meaning that no ARPA permit was issued prior to the looting of the archeological site. You also have to prove, and this is the hardest part to prove the criminal case, is that the people that looted the archaeological site had a criminal intent, that they did it knowingly and willfully in order to obtain the artifacts, typically to be sold. 
and that the value and the cost of the act to the federal government or the tribal government was greater than $500. That's actually pretty easy to prove in most cases. So as a CRM professional, what would your main role be in ARPA cases? You would prepare legal documents to help the prosecution. This might require you to write a summary report of the looting and the nature of the disturbances at the archeological site. You would help calculate the market value of the artifacts, meaning you might go on eBay and see what similar artifacts are selling for on the black market for artifacts. Then you would also calculate the archeological value of the disturbance, meaning what would it cost to actually excavate the portions of the site that were disturbed by the looters. So what are the criminal penalties if convicted? These penalties in increase upon multiple violations. So if the archeological value or commercial value and the cost of restoration or repair is $500 or less, it would be a misdemeanor penalty one year of one year imprisonment and or a $100,000 fine. Now these are just guidelines. The judge would not have to, it's not have to actually do that. If the archeological value or commercial value and cost of restoration or repair is greater than $500, that would be a federal felony, and it would require at least, well, not require, but establish a guideline of two years imprisonment and a $250,000 fine. Now, again, the judge can do whatever he or she wants. These are just sentencing guidelines. So in terms of ARPA, you can also file what's called a civil suit. And the benefit would be that the feds federal agency does not need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that it was an ARPA violation or that there was criminal intent. That's the main thing. So you also must only prove that there's a preponderance of evidence that shows guilt. So the level of documentation is not quite as high for a civil suit. It also, it also means that there would not be a jury trial. If, if it was a federal uh, criminal case, there would be a jury trial. Um, civil penalties uh, would not include fines and in, in jail, then um, uh, lawyers are not required for those cases. All right, so in terms of ARPA and federal agencies, the Bureau of Land Management owns 245 million surface acres and 700 million subsurface acres of federal land in the western United States. 85% of Nevada is owned by the federal government. 60% of Idaho is owned by the Forest Service and the BLM and 30% of Montana is owned by the federal government. So there's a lot of federal land and tribal land in, in the Rocky Mountain West and the general just over Western, Western United States. So monitoring archeological sites is a huge issue, especially in places like the Four Corners region of Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, Colorado. There's a lot of archeological sites that have, have artifacts of, of very high value that can be sold on the black market. And so those areas in particular need to be monitored for ARPA violations. There's also a lot of looting of archeological sites in Montana and Wyoming as well. I established videos on the Moodle website. There's uh, three videos that I want you to watch about ARPA. So the common types of ARPA crimes are vandalism of rock art. Um, you can see pictures of the, what I mean by that up here on the slide. So that would be the spray painting over Native American rock art, for example. Uh, vandalism of archeological structures. So um, maybe there would be a series of rock cairns or um, teepee ring stone circles and someone went out there and, and disturbed them. Um, uncontrolled digging at sites, so somebody digs into an archaeological site to find artifacts. And then uh, what's very common, especially in the Midwestern United States where there's lots of burial mounds with important and valuable artifacts, uh, there's, you would have to, you could uh, see evidence of looting of those burials and mounds. So looting and meth, this is kind of an odd situation here that um, there's been instances of looting of archeological sites in 17 states associated with um, meth heads. So basically meth heads find digging to be a soothing activity while they're on meth. And you also have meth labs in rural areas near archeological sites. So you can often get people on meth to dig at archeological sites, find valuable artifacts that then can be sold to buy more meth. This has occurred in 17 different states in which meth has been associated with archeological looting, which means 
investigating ARPA violations can be dangerous. Sorry about that. They were arrested for the transport of the looted items from the mounds across state lines. Remember, that's considered an ARPA violation. They were Five men were prosecuted under the law. They each received $5,000 fine, a four months home detention, and two years probation. That's a more typical sort of penalty for an ARPA violation. Um, so BLM is a, is a significant prosecutor of um, ARPA violations. As you can see in this chart in the upper right of this, uh, there were 67 ARPA violations in fiscal year 2004. That's gone up significantly since then. Uh, there's been lots of activity in terms of the prosecution, this, the case down below, the man who looted Elephant Mountain Cave in northwestern Nevada on BLM land ended up in jail owing 2.5 million, didn't go, ended up in jail owing 2.5 million dollars in civil penalties. So the, the cases can get pretty extreme. Um, I work in Yellowstone National Park. There, there have been several instances of ARPA violations in Yellowstone. Uh, there was a man arrested in 2002 with a couple hundred artifacts. He was given a year's probation and a $700 fine. There were a couple of people arrested with shovels and artifacts, um, also given fines. Uh, last, last summer, 2020, there was a man arrested and convicted of, of the looting of graves um, in Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone. So when does ARPA apply? Projects on federal or tribal land, you need a permit to excavate. You can't remove artifacts without that permit, and you can't transport or sell or receive stolen artifacts from federal or tribal lands. Who uses ARPA? Well, if you end up working for the federal government or a tribal government, and you're involved in either law enforcement or cultural resource management, the chances are that you'll have some uh, dealings with the Archaeological Resource Protection Act. And remember that some of the people that are doing the looting of archaeological sites can be in it to get artifacts to sell for drug use and other illicit behavior. So it's, it's better when you get into these situations to investigate them with appropriate law enforcement personnel. So we have a quiz on ARPA due this Sunday by 11.59 p.m. Um, after this week, for the next four weeks, 6, 7, 8, and 9, we'll be working with the National Historic Preservation Act. Um, which is arguably the most important law that we'll be covering in the class. Thank you.